Hi, this is Scott Bradfield, and this is Reading Great Books in the Bathtub. Welcome to the bathtub. I want to say that now. Welcome to the bathtub, even though there's no bathtub here. Uh, this week, we, we spent a long time on a lot of uh, three weeks on a three episodes on a long, kind of dense book. It's not a complicated, it's not a long book, it was complicated. And it was a great pleasure, but you needed to take that pleasure in sips, which is uh, Vineland by Thomas Pynchon. And after doing a book that's pretty, you know, it takes up tension over a long period of time. You know, I always think it's important to, to go off and read a few books that are easier to read. And uh, that, that kind of, you know, fall off the page a little more easily. And you can read in a day or two or a couple baths or two. Uh, one, of the, one of my repeatable pleasures in life has always been uh, Ross MacDonald. And repeatable pleasure, I think of two of the writers who I've gone back to more often, who uh, for repeatable pleasure you need somebody who's who's kind of you always know is pretty good, who wrote quite a few books, and who's actually wrote so many books that you you can't re I never remember which ones I've read and which I haven't. So between Ross McDonald and Rex Stout, I could pretty much you know cover any time I go on a trip or I don't know what to read. I always know I'll have a good time with their work. Um, there's certain things I always expect from them, and certain things that they always deliver. And they they try different things, but they're fairly uh, they're not they're not surprising in the types of stories they tell. So, mo for example, most of uh, Ross McDonald books are the Lou Archer detective so stories. Uh, they came out in the '50s and '60s. They're kind of the first kind of long series of detective novels to sort of challenge and uh, update Chandler and Hammett, who were the kings, obviously, in the detective story. Um, but he did something that neither Chandler or Hammett did, which he wrote a book, a novel or two, uh, every couple of years about the same character. So I haven't counted them, but there's, there's 15 or 20 Lou Archer books covering from the 50s to the early 70s. Uh, he wrote many short stories with Lou Archer in them, the Archer novels are very different from Chandler and Hammett. Uh, you can see a certain tradition being carried forward, but uh, he doesn't have that kind of rich, kind of arcane, weird uh, uh, poetry of Chandler. You know, the, the tough guy poetry of the early Chandler and the kind of just amazing beauty of the late Chandler. Again, I, I want to do a long goodbye one of these days. It's still one of my all-time favorite novels. Uh, McDonald's prose is a lot more spare. It's uh, the, the he doesn't go off on all these metaphorical riffs. He doesn't do these little morality or uh, philosophical passages like John D. McDonald does. He pretty much focuses on the plot and the characters of all his his stories. So uh, the one I just finished is The Zebra Striped Hearse. This is somewhere in the middle. I don't think I've read this one before. And the the metaphor of the zebra striped hearse, which is driven around by some kids, some beach kids, some teenagers in, who, who aren't really significant characters. They have a very small part in the book. But it's just that image of this zebra striped hearse and these kids having a great time and thinking they're enjoying themselves while they're driving a hearse, which is a perfect metaphor for for McDonald. Most of his books have those type of uh, titles to the black money, so everyone wants the money, but there's a darkness to it. Sleeping Beauty, uh, The Ivory Grin, these are all the kind, they're all death, they're all basically death. The Chill, one of the great ones is The Chill. I really rec I recommend this one. Uh, even the Blue Hammer. Some of these titles are just they're they're very simple at first, and they kind of they kind of expand a bit as you read the book. The Blue Hammer. A friend of mine always loved this this title. Uh, the Blue Hammer is that that uh, McDonald meets this uh, Lou Archer meets this woman. He has a love interest in the book, and which is unusual in Archer. Usually Archer is pretty much alone, and usually the women he's attracted to. Um, either he's are dangerous or he 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 can't really get involved with them. And he gets involved with a woman in the blue hammer, and there's a scene where he's watching her sleep, and he looks at the blue vein pulsing in her neck, and that's the blue hammer. And he and he thinks about that kind of gives a violent strike striking of the hammer, and then there's this kind of peaceful thing that you want to continue, and that kind of pounding of life and that kind of violent kind of 
basic that basic rhythm of life, which has a violent component, is is a nice little metaphor for uh, for for Ross McDonald. Uh, Far Side of the Dollar, Ivory Grin. I don't think I've read that one. I've read The Chill a few times. The Instant Enemy is a great title. Uh, there's one called. Uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of good titles in there. Um, oh, the the goodbye look, the underground man. I don't seem to have my copy of the. Oh my gosh, I don't have the underground man. I got to find that. The underground man is another nice Im image. What what we get in a lot of the late Ross McDonalds is again the the, the plots are quite complicated. They are almost always about long standing family relationships between a few families. And Archer usually comes in today, in whether it's the 50s or the 60s, and he meets a family that looks unhappy. There's, there's definitely a tension. There's always a tension between the between the, the husband and wife, and especially between the parents and the children. And almost all of MacDonald's uh, books about Archer are about the tragedy of what parents leave to their children and what they cause to happen in their children. And that's it's kind of the sad part of the books, and it's kind of the compelling part. But most of the, the children in the books don't always come to good ends. So when we see in the zebra striped hearse these kids running around, you know, again they don't die or anything in the book, but the fact that they're all having a good time and hanging out at the beach and driving to this zebra striped hearse, uh, and and their parents aren't paying attention. There's a bit of a a bit of a reactionary old fartishness about the way McDonald looks at young people in the 60s and 70s as if, oh, the daddies and the mommies aren't looking after them because they're all running around with long hair. There's a little of that, but there's also a sort of sense of this after the war, this generation that has this kind of a lot of wealth, lots of big houses, and really uninteresting houses. Uh, McDonald, Ross McDonald doesn't look at the kind of these weird orchid-like peculiarities of these rich, fabulous houses like Chandler does. He's basically looking at the kind of dull suburban houses, sometimes wealthy and near the beaches, but he doesn't go into the real details. He really looks into the relationships of the characters, and he sketches them pretty quickly. So we go into a modern family. There's a problem in the family, often with them and the children, or the children with their parents. And as he looks into this, he starts to uncover this long family history of interrelationships between two or three families who have changed over the years, particularly since World War II, when they all, most of the men have come back from the war and have different relationships that have often been developed by their, their relationships that they, they forged in the military, and how they can't really quite make this new world of theirs, this kind of brand new houses and brand new shopping and lovely big cars work. And all these old ghosts come back to haunt them. So what McDonald, what, what Archer does, I always call, call him McDonald, what Archer always does, Archer is, by the way, Archer uh, finding the mark, but also it's Archer is the character, is uh, Sam Spade's character in uh, the Maltese Falcon. So the other thing you sometimes see in genre books is this kind of, you know, this kind of fun recollection of previous writers who McDonald had read. And if you read the Sue Grafton books, which I recall were, were not as bad as they looked. I haven't read many of them, but I remember reading one or two, and they were kind of interesting. She has a, her character, Milhone, Kat, Kat, Katie, Kathy Milhone, or whoever she was, she lives in Santa Teresa which is an homage to Ross McDonald. So, you know, they're kind of little references to your, your heroes and your, your, your precedents in terms of your, your fictional output. And uh, McDonald writes uh, this, this series of books, very similar families, very similar situations. The occasional, the instant enemy is a lovely title, which is a kid that he just meets. And immediately that kid takes a violent swing at Archer. And Archer has to deal with uh, trying to. It's again, it's another recovery of a lost daughter in the, in the book. These stories get complicated. One, one murder leads to another, often tragically for the young people. The young people don't turn out well. They don't have good lives at the end of a, an Archer novel, usually. And the notion of parents and their children is just recurring throughout his books. And when you get into some of the great ones, like The Chill, particularly the relationships between mothers and sons. Uh, there's uh, uh, 
there's definitely a, a concern of Ross Mac, of Ross McDonald when it comes to parents with between mothers and sons, and in the the one I just finished, the zebra striped hearse, where you have a fairly complicated set of murders again, and, and a complicated family history, and a lot of people buried and being dug up. There's a lot of kind of deliver. There's there's a kind of clear kind of slightly camp Freudianism. So the underground man again was it was a good one. Uh, the uh, the chills filled with it, and this one has it as well. The the person who's considered to be the murderer, uh, and the most violent and crazy person, uh, McDonald at one point. Uh, at one point, Lou looks at him and says uh, uh, he had problems with his mother, and Lou says something to himself like, don't they all? All of these crazy uh, psychopaths have something with their mother. And another one he talks about is how the, the love for the mother, the mother loving the son uh, unequivocally and giving him and just whatever he does, right or wrong, the mother loves him leads to a kind of psychopathic personality for, for Archer. And he's always worried. He he's always sees the love of a mother for a son as a kind of sign, a sign to watch out, which is an interesting, an interesting picture. Um, I, I don't want to talk too much about these books. I love, I love Archer. He's, he's, he's uh, uh, as another friend mentioned the other day, he, was, he had been reading through these as well. You know, I think he read them all together. I kind of come back to them every year or two. I read one or two. And he was saying he read the whole series, and he, it was only one time that Archer took a gun out and shot anybody. This, Archer rarely commits violence. Almost every book, he uh, you know, uh, in the in the Marlowe books, he's always in shootouts and stuff like that. Particularly those early ones, and Marlowe rarely pulls the gun. I mean, uh, Archer rarely pulls a gun. Occasionally, he'll meet somebody aggressive, and he'll kind of give him a warning shot to the gut. That's one of the. That's about as violent as Archer gets, and most of the violence takes place off stage. They're not violent novels, though. Violence is they're about violence and why people commit that violence. Um, I I would recommend the one I just read. I would really recommend these late ones, like the Chill, the Underground Man's a really good one. The the, the Goodbye Look. I think the late ones are actually. I think he does. They're all good. The late ones get a little bit better. You don't need to read them in an order. Because other than the fact that, that Lou gets divorced in the first book, or his, you know, so I think he just, just got divorced in the first one, there, there's not any sequentiality. And I don't think there's any recurring characters. There may be a couple very minor recurring characters. So you don't have that kind of melodramatic uh, development of relationships you get in a lot of, uh, a lot of more recent detective stories, including, as I recall, the Parker's, Parker's Spencer novels. I, I think he, he does something with characters coming and going. Or the Vax novels about uh, the Andrew Vax novels about that guy. He was in a junker. I forget his name. But I would really these are there's something very kind of always reserved, always kind of cool, always very very understated, very understated prose. And then you really have to pay attention to this story because it, there are a lot of characters and they kind of sometimes look a little bit alike. Uh, but there is often this kind of Freudian. Uh, undercurrent that comes comes in through the resolution. And I, it, McDonald's got a good eye on American society in the 60s and 70s. And there's a few things that kind of put me off sometimes, but most of the time he's sort of interesting about them. And uh, he's also got, particularly in Sleeping Beauty, has some pretty uh, prescient uh, notions about environmentalism because we, I don't know much about McDonald's life, but he was, he considered himself an vi environmentalist, particularly in Santa Barbara where he lived. And he writes about all of California pretty well. He, the characters go up and down California. Lou's always traveling up from the north, from San Francisco, particularly all the way down to San Diego, with his trips into Mexico. And he does the coast really well. So I really recommend him. I think he's a, he's a really uh, uh, consistent writer, always intelligent, and uh, a little more plot, a little more plot driven than, than I look for in a, in a, in a novel. But uh, always, always a pleasure to read his books. Okay? So that's the end. Go out and get one of his books or get several of his books. Those are both good ones. Uh, they're, they're all pretty good. I liked. I just read Black Money recently, too. I really liked that one. It was the mid-years that I kind of missed. And we'll look for another kind of light uh, novel that you can read in a day or two for the next episode. So I'll see, I'll see you in the bathtub. See you in the bathtub.